Hello, Dimitris. How are you today? I'm fine, Thodoris. Depending on the circumstances, I'm, I'm well. I'm fine. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I'm healthy, and uh, that's the important thing uh, nowadays. I think the only important the only the only yeah. important thing. But we have our music here mm -hmm. with us tonight. This is the second act, the second episode of our mm -hmm. chat with Casey Crescencio the singer, songwriter and guitar player of The Deer Hunter. Please mastermind. don't forget, and mastermind, and mastermind, and mastermind. And mastermind. That's a word that you really like. Yes. Please remember, subscribe here to our channel in the air tonight with weekly episodes with amazing guests from all the rock industry and its subgenres. Don't forget to click the bell. Ring, ring the bell. Sorry. In the air tonight is presented by Dimitris and Thodoris, of course. So, Dimitris, let's go to our second part of uh, of our guest, Mister Casey Crescencio of the band uh, The Deer Hunter. Yeah. Hi, Casey. Hello, Casey. Hello. Hey, guys. How are you How tonight? Are you? Good. Doing well. Okay. Uh, okay. We are getting used to you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we we, uh, in the next week will come and we will not know what to I'll do. I'll just show up. I'll just be <laughs> trying to get into whatever conversation you're launching with somebody else. <laughs> okay. That's amazing. Okay. Casey, so, we, will begin, we will begin our tonight show with uh, some uh, fast quiz for you. We okay. will tell you two bands. Uh, you will choose one of them. And of course, okay. you will tell us why you choose this band. It's okay. the section. It's the section of the inspiration. Yes. It's a new okay. section uh, for the second part of our chat. Okay, so there is. Okay. First quiz is Genesis with Peter Gabriel or with Phil Collins. Oh, uh, with Peter Gabriel. Genesis with Peter Gabriel. And why? For me, uh, because I think. Well, the thing that I liked about Genesis was, I think, what he was doing with it, the theatricality and like. The, just how over the top and it, the level of drama in the music. And I think this is true for a lot of bands in the eighties that, that theatrical, not, not even like carnival esque, but just, um, all encompassing performance and creation and like conceptualizing music, that side of them was much more interesting to me than, when Phil Collins was fronting the band and like the front of that band was not nearly the same, the same aesthetic or the same goal. So I just really appreciated what they did more. And I like Peter Gabriel better as a singer and as a front man than I do Phil Collins. Um, even though I think they wrote incredible music still with Phil Collins, <laughs> just it's not the stuff that I hear. And I'm like, what is that? That sounds wild. I really like that. It's like, oh, yeah, I remember hearing that in the shoe store <laughs> or like, oh, I've heard this song before. Um, but they definitely seem like they got more successful with Phil Collins. I don't know. But yeah. now it comes the fun opinion. And the fun opinion is that you, in your prog element, mm -hmm. you remind me of the Phil Collins era, <laughs> and not that <laughs> one of Peter Gabriel. Well, I think the, the music that I grew up on was, probably closer to like I would I listen to a lot more of the police than I ever did mm. Peter Gabriel uh prior to his solo music like the the music of Peter Gabriel that I really listen to is just Peter Gabriel I don't r really listen to too much Genesis either way but I could see how that era of music was more influential than 70s Prague until later on that I discovered it that's true. Have you ever been dressed up on a stage like Peter? No. I mean, I've done like Halloween shows where yeah. I would dress up with the band or we would have some theme that I would dress up for. We all dressed up for. And I think like we did. Uh, my last band did. Um, what did we do? Wizard of Oz and I was the Cowardly Lion <laughs> or. Uh, a few other things like that I can't remember, but I've never done just for the sake of the show yeah. any yeah. sort of the closest thing is like I, I'm almost always wearing a hat on stage or 
I, I usually wear black clothes, but mm. there's no real like it's time to get in my stage uniform yeah, and yeah. go out and put on the show. Yeah. So second dilemma. Have you ever heard of Queen with Paul Rogers or Adam Lambert? And yeah. which one do you prefer the most? That's a That's very tough. difficult Those topic. are two things that I don't like at all. Those are just <laughs> two things that I don't really have really? any interest in at all. Mm. I, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe on principle, Adam Lambert, because he seems to embody something more representative of what Freddie Mercury embodied. But even so, it's like the, of all the elements to be removed from Queen and to try to replace you're replacing the single most influential frontman probably of mm. mo of modern popular music and you're doing it with somebody who gained fame on a tv show so <laughs> it's just like how am i supposed to judge between those two things and then <laughs> with course. paul rogers it's just not that just doesn't really it doesn't do anything for me i don't know it's it's Freddie Mercury. Like it's Freddie. You're, you're fighting a losing battle. <laughs> call the band something else. Call it call it anything else. But Queen is is Freddie Mercury as the like arrowhead of this band that's just really perfect as a backing band for his voice. Casey, I totally well, agree with you. I totally agree you. with you. I don't. For me, <laughs> for me, they should have named. Uh, uh, the, the band uh, with another name. Yeah, why not? Yes. They, they, or not they, queen songs, but, they but can they like can they include they can include the word queen, but they can add another word, for example. They have done something uh, like, uh, they have done something similar, uh, which uh, it was called Queen Extravaganza, if you know that. That guy, what's his name? It, what, it was Roger that. Taylor and that Mark, uh, Mark uh, something, Mark uh, yeah, yeah. Martel, I, 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 Martel, something like Martel. Yes. yes. He was he the perfect. Is, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe his voice. I'm sure you've seen the video of him doing Bohemian Rhapsody. On Every piano. video, every video, that? of course. I, I mean, he definitely, that's also something that is weird to me. Like that man's voice is... If, if you wanted to hear the best possible cover of Queen, you would have to listen to him sing. Like he's going to do the most spot on interpretation of it. So why didn't they just have him come and do it? Like why, when they made the movie, didn't they have him actually star in it? Like, I just don't know if the remaining members of Queen necessarily are making the best judgment calls about both their band, their legacy, and the way that they're represented in, in popular mm. media you know it's just weird but what what um, about the movie yeah. what do you think about the movie i, th I like thought it. the movie was like watching a, a, a vh1 behind the <laughs> band or behind the album reenactment it felt mm. like it felt like the band was writing their own fan fiction that's what <laughs> it felt like like they 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 shied away from the stuff that made Freddie Mercury interesting and I don't just mean sexually just the fact yeah. that like he's a very deep person and a very conflicted person and a very wild person and they kind of made everything feel like it was just you could have put a thousand bands in that movie and take away the very spot-on reenactments of things like Live Aid if you take away the those specificities that aren't really important to the story of that band you, that movie could have been about any band at all. The, yeah, the amount of true. things they made up, the, the record executive was fictional. The bass player, they didn't even give the bass player the respect of how he actually got in the band. Like it was just, he's there. All that <laughs> yeah, matters yeah. is Freddie shows up and the band is just waiting for Freddie Mercury. Um, I mean, it looks really good, but I think I'm just, after playing music professionally, and touring with as many bands as I've had the opportunity to tour with. Like, let's just say I have zero success. I've met a lot of people who are very successful. And I just feel like that's like propaganda, rock star propaganda, because mm. it, it never tells the true story that it's not that musicians and artists 
are either like angels or demons. There's this whole range in between where people are also just boring or annoying or a, a little too greedy or a little too conceited and nothing's ever that like nuanced in a movie. So I watched that movie and I was just like frustrated by it. And frustrated. I've only okay. seen it once. Frustrated. Yeah. Mm, me too. I don't know. Casey, one more, one more, I believe, difficult dilemma. Roger okay. Waters or David Gilmour? Oh, yeah. Oh. The, <laughs> eternal, the eternal question. Yeah. <laughs> Oh wow! I think that I think that I am more influenced by the stuff that David Gilmour has done generally as a musician, but like my playing or uh, the guitar tones that I gravitate towards, or like the way that the guitar is incorporated in a song. Um, You're bending. Your betting is very Gilmour. Definitely, Gilmore. definitely. That's something that it was like not studied him, but it was like okay, that color that you can create with bending is so specifically his. That approach, it's like almost violin esque in its like look, le complete legato. But yeah, uh, yeah. but I think I would say Roger Waters. I mm. think that I would I would go in that. Are, are we asking about like the post which side of the fork not the solo or... not the not uh, the no, no, solo no. career but, but in pink, pink floyd. floyd yeah yeah yeah, yeah. within pink floyd i think roger waters but uh, as a guitar player david gilmore amazing but i think yeah uh, have you heard he, uh, david uh, gilmore solo works not much no oh, oh okay, okay is there anything is anywhere you would tell me to start with something i could write it down yes on an island on an island yes that an was uh, about uh, to tell you 2006 has, uh, has like a, a blue cover it will be it's very uh, popular uh, popular yeah. and not, the, only, uh, not only popular too but the cover is uh, is so a greek nice island that, it's a greek yes. island yes. he has written a song about a greek island, a greek island and yes. all the album is about nature blues meets nature it's yes. something like that okay like that. what was it again it was called on an island on an island, okay. on an island. Awesome. All right. Cool. So <laughs> we have taught you something today. <laughs> it yes, was our turn. <laughs> so the other eternal question: Beatles or Stones? Oh, Beatles. I mean, oh, so easy. Hands down, the Beatles. There's, it's so easy. <laughs> the, like I get, I get the the Stones feel like one of the first punk bands. You know, I think that that's something that. They 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 deserve so much credit for the the angst that they portrayed, but beyond that, like I I think the Beatles are just responsible for so much of the harmonic content of Western music. Like there's just no denying everything from the the chord progressions to their approach to actual harmony to production every aspect of what they did the way that it's been able to influence everything from recording technology that has nothing to do with whether or not you like any of their voices or any of of what they're doing musically all the way up to just the simplicity of the chord progressions as a songwriter or anything that you pick that band apart for you can find a lineage that extends to something now or somebody now who's just discovering them and in some way it it evolves what they're doing even though it's been around for longer than you know half, half a century at this point uh 60 years yeah yeah crazy um so yeah i would i would go in that direction for sure i would i would say the beatles and and also i think it's funny somebody told me this once i don't know if this is true but like that the even though the rolling stones had that uh aesthetic or that everyone thought they were like the the punky ones that they were actually like they had met in college uh, <laughs> yeah. and you know art school and they kind of designed this band yeah um and then the 
you know, the Beatles were the punky kids from Liverpool and their whole like look of suits was yeah. almost like the antithesis of who they were, you know? Um, I just love, I love that side of it too. Like that it's subversively, they're these really stand up square people to some people who are like, you know, they're not punk enough, but actually they're kind of, they're just yeah, Liverpool they kids. That, yeah, they absolutely were. And do you think that uh, you love uh, the next two bands? Electric Light Orchestra or Toto? Uh -huh. Oh, oh, I mean, <laughs> e ELO for sure. Like something oh, happened sure. to me seven or eight <laughs> years ago, I think. Like there's some cool Toto songs, sure. But ELO, Jeff Lynn, like going down the, he feels like in the lineage of the Beatles to me. And definitely in my songwriting, when I discovered him in my own life, like, when he was when that music was presented to me in more ways than just on a commercial you know because mr blue sky ends up on a bunch yeah. of commercials uh, and in I'm america so not in greece in america <laughs> yeah I, i'm sure it doesn't end up outside of the uk and america but it it's all over the place for it's been all over the place for a while and i had no idea what the song was or who the band was really i thought that like the song sounded to me like some hip band of the time when I first heard it like trying to sound like music from the 70s <laughs> and then somebody was like no that's ELO like that's that's they were around since like the late 60s and mm -hmm. then I went back and started listening to them after I was shown like the disco stuff and just fell in love like I I listened to the record time by ELO I when I was working on the short film uh, like for a year straight working at my computer, I think that was the record I just listened <laughs> to on repeat. Like I got so into them, it's ridiculous. But yeah, ELO, huge ELO fan, huge ELO fan. Well, we know, we know that, we know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can tell. I'm sure so, it's obvious. <laughs> so, uh, another metal dilemma. The last okay. one. The last one. Yeah. Last yes. One. Okay. Fate's warning or Dreamy Theater? I don't even know the first band. Really? I because don't even know the first band. Really? So Can you say it again. So Fate's warning. Fate's warning? Yeah, you didn't. Wow, that's very interesting because it is um, a very popular prog metal band in all Europe, with amazing success the past thirty years, and he, they are from America. Really, that's very I, interesting. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know a lot of bands at all, but I've, uh, okay. yeah, I, I don't, um, I don't know them. I, I'll look them up. I'll look them up. I'll write of them course. in my book. Of course, of course. Okay, okay. Uh, it, it and is they have, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry, Mitri, and they have uh, an excellent guitar player. His name is Jim Matheus. It's Jim a Mateos. half Greek. Jim Matheus. Yeah. Jim, so, Jim Martel. Matheus. Yes. Matheus. M A T H E A E O S. It's a, one of the best guitar players of uh, progressive metal. You have okay. you have to you have to begin from a pleasant shade of gray. It is For a concept you. album. It is a concept <laughs> album that you that you will adore. For yes. sure. The first uh, the first four records. Uh, are more like of a power metal band and then they turn to be a progressive band till nowadays. Awesome. Pleasant awesome. Shade of Grey uh, Pleasant Shade of Grey is a concept very similar to your to Mr. Hunter and mm -hmm. uh, his sentiments. It, uh, awesome. it is separated in acts like your work and uh, you will be a, a phase warning are your inspiration without knowing that. <laughs> yes. So you have to awesome. listen to them. So I will rephrase well, the dilemma. I will rephrase the dilemma. Do you know Queen's Reich? I only know the like the video from the late eighties or early nineties. The eyes of a stranger, right for sure. The I eyes of a stranger. So. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah, so. yeah. That's so, all I know. That's so, all I know. So you will choose Jimmy Theater because you must know Jimmy Theater. Yeah, I, I definitely know. But I and, think uh, that Casey will prefer Haken, the new version of Doom Theater. Haken. H-A-K-E-N, right? I yeah, still yeah, yeah. have not listened to them. I still have not listened to them. 
Okay, to, okay. Have, that's it. That's okay, okay. Let, let, let's move on. Okay. Him what to I'm so ignorant. I'm so ignorant. <laughs> no, no, I, I no, no. Say it's, no. It's weird, but I stopped. I really stopped listening actively to music like, I don't know, five or six years ago. I After we were just touring so much and music was around so much and you would like, it's a great problem to have, but like when you'd be yeah. in the van and you'd be touring and everyone's putting on different music in the van, then you'd get to your venue and you'd get out and you'd do a long sound check and then you'd you'd go and sit backstage and then there'd be music playing over the sound system in between every band that would play. And it's like by the end of the night, by the end of a tour, you're just like silence sounds like the most interesting thing I could hear for a little while. <laughs> and it, it started, true. it just got to the point where I stopped hearing about new bands. And now when I like I'm checking back in on like what music is there, there aside from all the stuff I missed from just never being exposed to it, there's just like, there's so much new music, it's impossible to know where to begin. Casey, don't worry, don't worry at all. Uh, that's why we, we will go back to your, to your band right now. So we please tell to. us, no, no, please tell us, what is the feedback you have so far for the Fox and the Hunt album? On which album? The Fox, Fox and, and the Hunt. Hunt. Oh, yours. Oh. Yours. Uh, uh, mostly oh. confusion is what I felt from a lot of people because they, you know the the way that it was released was a little bit confusing the the cover makes it look like it's a new deer hunter album and that's not necessarily true but and it wasn't actually what the cover said initially but we ran into some issues trying to put it on streaming platforms so we had to put the deer hunter's name on it but it's mostly been really good feedback but a lot of people have been confused and then let down when they expected it to be a Deer Hunter record. So that's been a weird element of it where people are coming into it with one expectation that's based a little bit on not fully understanding what the record is to begin with. But then they've got that expectation, they hear it, it, it doesn't even try to fulfill that expectation. So obviously it fails miserably at that expectation. <laughs> and then they just are like, well, it wasn't a new Deer Hunter record, so I don't like it. Um, but that's a super vocal minority. There's always a super vocal minority with of anything course. I put out that is always the minority that I focus on the most by far. Like one person saying something bad is enough for me to just walk away from the computer, like with my head down. No, like, no, what am no. I, what no. am I even doing? That's just, I have thin skin. Yeah. I'm just sensitive, that's all. But um, yeah, but everybody who understood what it was and then listen to it that I have spoken to really enjoys what it is, which is just a repurposing of all of this sonic content that was yeah. created that really has to take a back seat on an album. Because, you know, if, if we had flipped the script and mixed the, the orchestra with extreme clarity and then the band behind it yeah. on the original records, people would have been pretty let down. So to be able to take all of that stuff that, you know, Brian Adam McCune and I and David Meshler um, and the orchestra players in the studio put so much time and effort and energy into making sure it could sound good, being able to repurpose that and release it was incredible. And I feel like a lot of people have enjoyed it, but I don't know. It wasn't too, like, weird to say, but it wasn't, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It wasn't meant uh, really to be like, here's the next big thing we're yeah. doing. No, no. And that's why you, I think that you haven't promoted it so much. Either I don't know how. Uh, how you know, it's like, what do yeah. you do to promote that other than it's very talk difficult. about it? Yeah. You know, and yeah. I'm the worst at doing that part <laughs> of things. Like, uh, the ways that I like to promote things are I would go and film some short music video for one of the pieces or I would rather promote things with more content and art than just get out and say like, you guys really got to listen to this. I did, yeah. a, I did a great <laughs> job on this record. Me. It's my I best album. It. Yeah, it's, it's my like, best. <laughs> I hate when people do that. I hate when people do that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I haven't known how to promote it other than just t putting, you know, links on Twitter and Instagram. I don't know where to do that. Or, or okay, 
if you are interested in my opinion as a fan yeah. what i have received from folks that they had uh, promo and uh, the whole story uh, around it it was very confusing because um, that's what uh, you said before i didn't know how to approach it as a deer hunter album as a casey album as an instrumental um, parenthesis in all the deer hunter history because i've totally recognized all the elements of the past the melodies uh, some right. orchestrations that are not similar are the same with yeah. um, with the orchestra that gives more layers to the previous orchestrations and that made me confused because i approached it as a best of orchestral album of the deer hunter and that's right. why i enjoyed it i enjoyed it because I had the opportunity to make the images without the lyrics because I knew the lyrics. I knew the story. I knew what KC would think on every part of that instrumental uh, thing. But I think that um, some fans that are connected to the band the last few years or the new fans uh, would be very confused because there were not any um, plot behind it any information behind that album that's what i think uh, it is the lack of promo in an amazing album though because i think that it was amazing all the work behind it all the budget that you must have used is so oh, wait, well i don't know what you, did, but what you did just yeah. for clarity um yeah. and maybe you already understand this but all of the orchestra tracks on that record were the re the tracks from act four and five okay okay that they makes sense all, so when we recorded act four and five we recorded the orchestral tracks yes, at I know studio that. fantasy I know that. studios with awesome orchestra and so <clears throat> there was a lot that i recorded there as well that i wasn't sure would actually make it on to act four and five like for instance, there's a like there's melodies in the orchestration for Wait on Act Four that were removed from the song that are present on the yeah. actual uh, Fox and the Hunt track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all they were was we knew that we wanted to release the orchestra only for from Act Four and Five, but because the way that the orchestration was written, there's a lot of gaps that it was like this doesn't make sense to do linearly and mm. just say like that would that would sound to me like when somebody releases um like archival recordings and they they let you hear here's just the acapella tracks and you can kind of hear the backing track from the headphones and stuff like that so we said let's just repurpose everything that we recorded into a record that has all of that content in it presents it like it's an orchestral album but doesn't try to bite off the same narrative content of act four and five because we can't really put we can't combine these tracks in such a way that we're going to be able to have a narrative yeah that was something that we tried to explain when we first announced the project to a certain degree but i can absolutely see like without fortifying that idea for people and without not like multiply, you know, multiple times explaining it, but I'm sure there was a way that we didn't do where we could have had some video content that showed us with the orchestra originally from the yeah. tracks or like other promotional things that people could have used. Um, a lot of the time that comes down to at this point, the fact that as a band fully independent, we it's always hard to make a decision to spend money purely on marketing yeah. um, and make the That's judgment true. call when I don't have any expertise in knowing, oh, if we spend X amount of dollars, that will yield a good enough plan yeah. or a good enough promotional strategy that we will at least make that back. Um, so, so probably I think part of the issue is being a little less ambitious with the way we market what we're doing then we are ambitious with what we're actually doing yeah. and i think that's something we've slowly been learning about like through all of these projects smaller projects we've tried to sell like through the cave and canary goods 
thing. I think all of the lessons we've learned will be applied to mm. this next thing that we're releasing. But um, it's super clear that it, in hindsight, like we didn't handle that promotional period where people are yeah. first introduced to it the right way, <laughs> give them the best like first uh, listen by putting it in context for them. Um, another problem I think that I have in that regard is like there's a certain level of mystery I like the audience to approach something with. Not that I like being mysterious, but that I appreciate in an experience sometimes when there is a large portion of it that is discoverable, but is left up to me to kind of put together. Um, but even that, it's like, I didn't accomplish that. I think it's just like, that's always in the back of my mind, yeah. say less. Yeah. Say less, say mm. less about what you're doing. And yeah. then on the other end, I'm like, you should have said more. You should have just explained <laughs> exactly what this was. Nobody's going to like or dislike what you're doing based on knowing more going into it. Like you have to find the balance. Was stupid. Yeah. yeah. It's about it's definitely a balancing act that I'm hoping we will be closer to the middle yeah. of by the time we put something so else out. But yeah. We could give we could give a second chance to folks on the hand after that interview. Oh. We could uh, we could you use that. I'm proud, <laughs> proud of it. But yeah, yeah we yeah. should just take yeah. what I said about it and we'll yeah. just put it the out. Explanation. Like, okay, the explanation. Okay, I'll post is. it under under the videos of Fox and the Hand for everybody Thank to watch. <laughs> okay, Casey. Sorry. Next, yes, Casey. Next week uh, you are about uh, your, sorry your new video for honorary astronaut is about to be released. Tell us some anything you may need uh, for this video. We know, we okay. know. Yeah. Of course, we know. Okay. But uh, let don't. let the fans have a preview. Okay. Um, the video. So, the the video that I did for a song called, um, or not I did. I did with my partner Erez Bader, and he was the he credits me as director because we were so involved as co-director, but he was the director on set. And he did so much work on that. That, But we did a video for Blame Paradise off of a EP called All Is Is All Should Be. And it's a totally wacky video starring a tomato. I don't know if either of you guys yeah, have yeah. seen that video. Of course, of course, of course. Um, but that was a video. That was the first time where he and I were just texting back and forth one night. And I was telling him as I was listening to the mix of Blame Paradise, I was like, I have this really funny idea for a video that's just almost a stereotypical 80s high school uh, movie condensed into a five minutes and it's done like non almost non satirically it's not making fun of them but it's just starring a tomato and <laughs> and he was like what like he was like go on you know i don't understand this but go on and then we just spitballed this entire crazy video idea and we were so tickled by the idea that it was like well let's just do it and it's going to be cheap enough to do um, we'll be able to figure it out, and if people don't like it, at least we'll make it sort of so ridiculous that it can't be written off as horrible. It's like <laughs> it'll be so weird that at least it's it's enjoyable for the spectacle. Um, so that kind of conversation happens every now and then, and I was talking to him, and I told him this idea for a video for that song, EKE, and... I was sort of just like stream of consciousness, this idea about this sort of, I really like loops. I really like time loops, the idea of things coming full circle and being like inevitably repeating. Um, so I just had this idea for somebody who is part of a never ending cycle of people who are responsible for chopping wood down to uh, a toothpick to be discarded and then retrieve another piece of wood for the next person to chop down. And I have like my, you know, symbolic ideas behind what the video does actually mean to me and what that journey and all of the, the ridiculousness of the video does mean to me. Um, I don't know if anyone else would find it interesting or just call it out as bullshit, but Basically, I had this idea, and then I was able to film it in my front yard um, and around the driveway, and with, like, I got some green screen material. So the entire video was just 
uh, like I did everything on it except civilly. Um, my girlfriend should I should be saying my wife, but my girlfriend. Um, <laughs> she helped film and like make sure that I like makeup was done if it needed to be. Spritzed my helmet when I needed to wipe it down. Um, so yeah, it was just like had this idea, wanted to do it. Thought it was weird enough that maybe again, like the tomato video, it might be fun for people, whether or not it makes sense to them. Um, and then we tried to get it to a few different online publications. Like it's been it's been finished for well over a month, and we started showing people. And then with the election in the U.S., it was just like more and more publications were like, we don't really care about they. Understandably, where they were not interested in what some random guy in a relatively unknown band is releasing a completely <laughs> nonsensical video. They were like, yeah, let's put our time into this. <laughs> so we were push, pushing it around like this. Is there anywhere that would be cool to, you know, debut this? Nobody was interested. So it was like, all right, we'll just put it out ourselves. And uh, we put it up for our fans on, we have this online community called Pillar, which is sort of like a, I don't know, for lack of better words, like, I, it's almost like a VIP meet and greet in perpetuity with the band, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, we put it up for them, and I would say about 90% of the people, the response is just like, this is fun, and I like this, and this is so weird and surreal. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know how to describe it other than it's, like, inspired by 70s sci-fi. It's inspired by the same, like, that that era of CRT monitors and, like, everything is still gas powered and all of that kind of stuff, even though there's like sci-fi elements to it, it's still like low tech. And um, yeah, I just wanted to make something that I knew I could finish. It kind of is like a perfect companion piece to the EP itself because it was just this thing that I thought would be a lot easier that ended up becoming much more involved. And then I'm on the other side of it now and I'm just like, I'm happy I did that. I probably wouldn't do it again, but I'm happy I did that. Okay, so as we are waiting for your decision to have that TP on a vinyl someday, that's a personal request for oh, me and for the Riz. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, on yeah. vinyl. It's on it's, vinyl. Oh, it's on vinyl. It, the problem is that uh, it's for sale too, I think. Um, okay, okay. I don't that's my mistake. I don't want to throw this yeah. company under the bus, but we've, this has been going on with a lot of people apparently. Um, but the vinyl manufacturing companies are so backed up that th it's starting to get like weirdly manipulative. Like yeah. we were told we would have our records in September, then it was late September, then it was early October, then it was mid October, then late mm. October, switching out people who work there, telling us problems with their machines. And it's, it's, uh, it's definitely frustrating, but yeah, we do have vinyl Ooh, for it. We that's do have great. vinyl for it. I'm going to yeah. order it now. So, <laughs> my Maybe, next... you could probably wait. I don't. It's going to take a while to get to. Okay. You. Okay. Um, okay. The next one is another songwriting question. Okay. As you might know from me, of course, personally, because I'm trying to see what happens behind uh, the Deer Hunter songwriting process. Um, mm -hmm. How do you manage to balance between three basic zones? I might say that um, many songs of the Deer Hunter are something like pop meets indie meets prog rock. Is that behind the songwriting ideas or behind the producing process? Have you ever thought about it? Are you are you saying the the general is are you asking if that all is from producing or yeah, if it's all yeah. from songwriting it's, the, it's because the, it's, the inclusion of the different genres yeah 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 it, it is a great balance between three very different zones because i might say that uh, i've told you before about uh, phil Collins, sarah of uh, genesis yeah that uh, yeah. in the 80s they were a pop band truly a yeah. pop band but right. every prog element was there, was at the background. But you have managed to um, to promote the prog the prog elements 
in a pop canvas of vocals or melodies, and at the same time, a very indie sound uh, of all those bands of um, the MTV of uh, 2000, of the MTV of, uh, of the tens, that sound. And it is something amazing that I haven't uh, listened to, to any other band. And I like to know what, what happens behind all that uh, balance of these three elements. You might not uh, thought about it ever, because it's a, it's a detail that only the fans could see it, perhaps. I think that a lot of that comes from, well, a lot of it comes from the songwriting early. When chord changes seem to trigger instinctive, like, production techniques or production style. So where, you know, something something that I'm writing in with its melody, if it just is like this is pushing you in the direction of rockabilly or this or or you know, this or that, that I'm gonna push it in that direction naturally. And even when we're producing it, we're going to push it in that direction naturally. We're gonna treat the vocals a little bit more like rockabilly vocals. We're gonna treat drums like that. But at the end of the day, the production style that I think I probably gravitate towards is a bit of a not in a good or bad way but a bit of a bottleneck for all of that tangential songwriting and um, orchestration on the front end that then it gets passed through this bottleneck that probably the bottleneck that makes it sound like indie that pulls it in the indie direction is the production style and the you know the the palette of instruments that I was interested in and the tones that I like using, you know, I don't really gravitate towards a lot of, like with guitars, even when they're heavy, they're never really like shreddy, full, you know, full stack distortion all the way kind of shreddy guitars. They're, they're usually like, when they're supposed to be brutal, a lot of the time I'll, mm. we'll lean into fuzz or we'll lean into overdrive or like, layering rather than necessarily making one tone any too brutal um so i think because of that lean it ends up pushing things more in the indie direction and because things you know the way that i like to produce drums that might be pushing it more in uh you know in that pop general arena too and the way that i sing and the way that i like the stack harmonies and the amount of my voice I like to remain somewhat smooth or pure or, or you know, really conserve yeah. when it is that I'm going to do something that is pushing beyond my just comfort zone or, or, or trying to reach to the top or bottom of my range or of my dynamic range. Um, I think it's just it's all of these things adding together that are sometimes at odds with each other. And those kinds of bumps are smoothed out by the band and then the different things the band themselves, you know, everyone's bringing to the table. I end up smoothing those things out a little bit too. And all of these things just cascade one after the other, eventually becoming a finished mix that includes all of these different elements that are trying to be, you know, like a soup, like with a thousand <laughs> ingredients. It's like a very tasty trying soup. Trying to always yeah. mix it. A very tasty soup. Mm. Trying to always find the, the right balance. Of, the, of all of these things that I really love, like, you know, telling you my, my favorite records or even thinking of that or, or these records that really meant a lot to me, you know, I skip over a lot of albums that did mean a lot to me, but it made me think about how much the te technical proficiency has influenced me from other artists, like the way that that has influenced me. So I also have this threshold of technicality that I really do like to interject into what we're doing. And like the new record that I'm working on is a good example of it sounds, it, it might to somebody who's not interested in it sound mm. like eighties pop. It might come off sounding a little bit like new wavy eighties pop, but there's a lot of musicality and a lot of more like technical guitar parts, 
that are going on. Like it's the most technically difficult record for me to play so far. But the the package it's being wrapped up in doesn't on its nose say like I'm a prog record or I'm a uh, indie record or I'm a pop record. Um, so no I labels think, here. Like, yeah. Yeah, and that might be because I'm incapable of doing anything that that could be purely one thing. Like uh, I might not have the ability to say like I'm going to do a pop song head to toe. You're not going to question this is a pop song. There's going to be no moment or I'm going to do a ragtime song and head to toe. There's not going to be a moment that steps out of all of the arch archetypes of ragtime or something. Um, I think I get bored really easily too. So within a song, I want it to feel like it's a journey. And, and sometimes that's at odds with the, the genre I'm trying to pull into it. Hmm. But that's where I think you always end up hearing at some point in a song, yeah. the moment I must have said like, Okay, we get, it's got to go somewhere completely different now because this is just getting old. Um, okay. But yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so Lori, as okay. we go to the end mm. of our conversation, mm. we have We're already one, there. We have, yeah, yeah, of course. It was Pretty. a multi-hour chat. Yes, for, yes. Of true. I can't believe we're already there. It was it was an amazing chat with Casey. Thank you very one much. One more time. Thank you. One yes, more time. Thank you very much for everything. Absolutely. Uh, too many infos in the most uh, easy way. That's how I could describe your talking with too us. Many, too what? Too, too many too. infos of your music, but in the most easy way to understand it. That's uh, too, too, too many saying, infos. Oh, too information. Many. Information. Oh, it's, you're saying there's too much information in the Too music? many information, but we could uh, oh, like barely told. I like very, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. I think that's, that's what, it, it turns a lot of people off at first, you know, and a lot of people will hear it and be like, we'll have that reaction, I think. <laughs> Not that the information is amazing, but there's too much information happening here. But then the people who are interested, that is what they say. I listened to this record for the 30th time and I just heard this for the first time in it. Um, and I think it's designed for those people. Yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah. So let's go to the, the final question, Fodori. Yeah. Two, two, two. We have two final questions. Okay. okay. I'm okay. Sorry, Fodori. Well, it's a, no, it's a one question with two parts. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, act six will indeed be the last part of the story. And the other question is, what will you do? What will you, what will, you, will be your next step? If the if Act Six will be the last uh, part of the story. Um, are you saying what project would be next? Yeah. Or what would if well, if you have anything in mind? This is the second question. And the first one, if indeed Act Six will be your last. Uh, part of the story of Mr. Hunter's story. Yes, sorry. Uh, I think Act Six would be the last part of the story in the sense that whatever happens between Act One and Act Six is everything. Hmm. But but it's possible that there's opportunities to you know um, with the right artist who wants to be a part of the project, I would I would still go back and flesh out all of the records as graphic novels. That's one thing that I really want to wow. do. And part of that involves really expanding the scope of the story in terms of, uh, well, just making a b better explanation of it than the record is capable of doing. Like the way that I like making those records is not, it's not at odds with, but it's not really going to, it's not going to tell you everything <laughs> unless you you go really over the top with like musical cues and stuff like that. And even then it's not going to tell you everything that is happening in this story. So there's probably more story that would come out in graphic novels and a wider story and more explanations of everything. We can't um, wait for that. But it's, I, I can't wait for that. I can't wait for an artist <laughs> who wants to do it. But, um, but I would say as far as this, the, you know, there's no really big plot changes that would happen. It was just that you might learn a wider version of the story. But from Act 1 to Act 6, that would be everything yeah. possible. Okay. Um, but since that's not, that's not, that's not the record that I'm working on. 
um, right now, yes, or we know the that. records that I'm working on. So, so that's the, the first next part. project is, is the is the Indigo Child. Um, Indigo Child, but, okay. Yeah, yeah, the Indigo that's Child. The that's the future. Sure that's what it was called. Yeah, yeah, of course. The, the first part, okay, the first part of our section. I never know Indi what I do or don't share. I just, it's like, did I share that? Yes, yes. Indigo Child is the future of Casey. So, or at least it's a phase. Maybe it's a phase yeah. that'll be the next few okay. years. But we'll that's see. One we'll thing see. I definitely am not going to do, or I'm trying not to do, is there's no promise of like, hey, the Indigo yes. Child is going to be the next ten we know years that. of this band. I think it'll just be a few records and. Then maybe if nothing has happened with trying to get Act Six made the way I wanted to do it, maybe I'll go back and do that, or maybe something else. I'm not sure, but um, I'm all the the problem is is I'm always thinking of something new for myself. There's always something rattling around in my head of like a dream or an idea or or a small idea that suddenly becomes very big, and I'm starting to feel like uh backed up. Like, like, I can't make things fast enough to get through all of these ideas that I have. So it's becoming hard to look at everything and say, like, okay, now is when I want to spend a year and a half working on Act Six. It's always hard to make that judgment call because I don't want to do it unless I care about it just as much as any of the other records. I would never want to do it just because someone's like, hey, look, you could make a ton of money if you put out Act Six right now. I, it would if I put out a if I put out a record that I didn't care about making, it would be the end of everything. It, everyone would just the emperor's clothes would be seen, and everyone would be like, "Yeah, he sucks. He fucking sucks." Yeah, so that's what I don't want to chance what, that. I don't want to yeah. chance putting out a record that I'm not fully engrossing myself in and letting people hear what that music sounds like. That's what a no 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 a no very astronaut would do. Exactly. That's what you got. Yeah. So, Casey, it was a pleasure. These two shows. It absolutely was. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank, you Thank you for the much. Absolutely. We I'm, had. I'm happy to do this whenever. Look, I'm the new co-host. I'll take care of it. <laughs> That's amazing. Maybe we'll find the chance to put you against some other some some other musicians. That'd be to great. Fight. Okay, that's know, our next fight, project. But it could be a, it could just be a conversation. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. That's something we'll think about it and maybe we'll yeah, come back maybe. very soon. Back to awesome. you. Awesome. Okay. So, so Casey. Thank you so much. Have a great Thank you day both. ahead. Have have Hope a great day. Yeah, you guys best. Stay safe. Have a great night. Stay yes. safe you and your family because you have yes. a Stay little safe. child as we know. I do, a little yes. boy. Little boy. I have a little girl. Would you like to to be <laughs> to be married? How old is your little girl? <laughs> is 15 months old. Come on. He, yes. uh, he's three in a few months. I mean, the perfect if, difference. What you're proposing? If you're if you're proposing some sort of arrangement. Once yes, of age, a Greek you know? marriage. Yes. A Greek marriage. Yes, late, but yes, but later on, later on, because is both of them. Is there any sort of yes. what is it called? The father of the bride has to give. What is that mm -hmm. called? Uh, in Greek, is a, prika. Uh, in Greek is prika. I don't know in English. <laughs> I yes. forget what it's the, the gift that you have to yes, give. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. We we'll can discuss the details. That Fender over the next 18 years. That Fender Stratocaster and the first row of my vinyl. <laughs> okay. How's okay. it arranged? Alphabetically? <laughs> Alphabetically, of course. Okay. Well, I'll have to look into the A's and see uh, what Casey, I'm working with. <laughs> I yeah. Casey, I will choose the vinyls for you. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I will thank choose that. Don't so, worry. Case, thank you for everything. Thank you for your mm -hmm. kind words for my oh. music. Oh, <laughs> thank you for sharing them. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you and so much. The videos were really cool. Like, or, or I mean, the one, the the animated one, yeah. was really yeah. cool. Like it, it. I was surprised for sure when I clicked on it. That's like, great. Oh, shit. Thank you. Thank Very you. Cool. Very cool. We'll keep on yeah. sharing things mm -hmm. beside our children. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, bye bye for now. Okay. Bye bye for now. Yeah. We'll come back to you later when later we'll find also. the better opponent for you. Yes. yes. Find okay. me an opponent. Find me. Yeah, truly yeah. Find me an opponent. We will do. We will do. <laughs> bye bye. bye, -bye. All right. Bye -bye. See you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. See you. See you. Bye -bye. Dimitri, that was the second part of another very very interesting chat with. A very nice guy. 
that's uh, that's true for the race because uh, that's why we have chosen him uh, as the only person the only guest so far two weeks in a row yes thank you K- casey for all uh, that conversation uh, that we had because we learned everything about the deer mm-hmm. hunter the new project the new project of casey which is called the indico child we have learned everything about the new video clip of mm-hmm. honorary astronaut of course mm-hmm. that was released a few days uh, ago i think we have to thank casey for one more reason for being so patient with us <laughs> that's true because our guests have to be patient in this show okay mm-hmm. so thodori that's the end of another in the air tonight with thodoris and dimitris please don't forget subscribe here watch all the other episodes of in the air tonight that um, are about somewhere here in your youtube and of course please ring the bell gling 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 for all the notifications and send us your comments send us Whatever your comments here be. downstairs yes. downstairs downstairs okay so until next week until next week goodbye have a great and day ahead be we healthy, wish you all be the healthy. best yeah bye 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 bye